All right, so cardinals are kind of kind of like an extension of the sizes, the finite sizes, which are the natural numbers, uh, to look at the sizes of the infinite sets. And um, we can define uh, operations on them, like arithmetic operations, essentially, of addition, multiplication, and exponentiation on cardinals. Um, here are the definitions. And again, we like for the natural numbers, we define addition and multiplication using recursion, all nice or good, but we cannot do that here because these are cardinal cardinals are just sizes, and they are like infinite sizes. So recursion breaks down uh, this for now. So we need a more direct definition, and this is the definition. So and as you see, this does not make sense. So so kappa and lambda be cardinals. So that means they are sets which have a certain size, and they are the particular representatives of these sets that we call cardinals. Um, so the addition of these two cardinals is going to be the cardinal of the disjoint union of kappa and lambda. Okay, Cardinality of the disjoint union. So what do I mean by the disjoint union? So kappa square union lambda. Disjoint union means that we, we union them, but we force them to be disjoint inside the union. We don't want to kind of them to overlap. So essentially, usually what you do is you take um, all the pairs of the form 0 comma k for uh, k in kappa and you union with the pairs 1 comma l for l in lambda. So essentially, all right, so we kind of force them to be disjoint by uh, taking them, multiplying 1 times 0 and then 1 times 1 and now we have two disjoint sets. Uh, the ones that start with 0 are correspond to kappa, the ones that start with 1 correspond to lambda. And uh, so, so this essentially these sets, here are 0, here is 1, and here we have kappa, here we have lambda. It's the union of these two sets. Uh, and the addition of the cardinals is going to be the cardinality of this new set that we build by doing the disjoint union. Okay, makes sense. And good. So what about times? For times, we just do the Cartesian product. And so the cardinality of the Cartesian product of kappa and lambda. So the set of all pairs from kappa and lambda. And, and again, we, we have to apply this cardinality function because this set up here is not going to be a cardinal itself. We just need to take a representative for the size. So the size of kappa times lambda. And then we can also define um, a notion of uh, exponentiation in, in cardinals. Kappa to the power of lambda um, is the cardinality of the set of functions from lambda to kappa. By the way, the textbook uses um, this notation up here. Kappa to the lambda is the set of all functions from lambda to kappa. Okay, so kappa to the lambda, if you notice the difference, the subtle difference here, kappa to the, when well, the lambda is on the left, it's a set of all functions, and you have to think of the kind of functions kind of going down from lambda to kappa. And kappa to the lambda with the lambda on the right is the cardinality of that. Okay, so it's a, it represents the size of that. You forget, so in this case, that you, don't, you don't think of them as functions anymore, you're just talking about the number of such functions, the, say, the size of the set of such functions. Okay, so exponentiation is that. Um, one uh, nice observation to make is that if kappa and lambda were just numbers, just finite numbers, these operations correspond to the standard operations on the natural numbers, right? So we're not doing anything new here, right? So if you have like the, the set of functions, how many functions are there from 0 n minus 1 to 0 n minus 1. So this one has n elements and the other one has elements. How many functions are there? There are how many functions from here to here? Well, you guys know this, right? This is just m to the power of n, right? So that's how you define exponentiation there. And so the basic properties are going to be fine for the natural numbers, but now we're defining these for just sets of any size. Okay? It's actually quite surprising that these operations on infinite sets have almost the same properties as this operation in natural numbers. Not all the same, but many of them are the same. 
So for instance, uh, the, the operation, the addition operation is associate, associative, satisfies the associativity law. So it doesn't matter where you, if you add first these two or, or then these two, uh, you get the same result, right? It doesn't matter who do you add first. And to show that, let me just do uh, one of the cases because they're all very similar. Um, you need to show that there is a bijection between the sets. So this set up here, this is the cardinality of what? This is the cardinality of kappa square union. So this joint union, lambda mu. And this one is the cardinality of kappa union, lambda union mu, right? So what is this set up here? Well, this setup there is uh, zero, the set of pairs zero and something in kappa, union, uh, set of pairs uh, one cross, set of pairs zero, one. Um, right, uh, that's what that set is. And then if we, the, if we kind of uh, work with this uh, cross products and unions, we get that we get, we get zero uh, times kappa, union, one comma zero times lambda, union, 1 comma 1 times mu, right? That's what that set is. Uh, it's essentially, these are three sets of that of the corresponding sizes, and then we're using them together. So it's obviously, it's not hard to see that when we look at this one, we're gonna get something slightly different, but uh, very similar, right? We're gonna get the pair 0, 0 times kappa, union the pair 0, 1 times lambda, union just one, I need more space, times mu, and it's not hard to see that this guy and these guys are equinumerous. So to show these are equinumerous, you need to map this set to that set, and then map this set to this set, and map this set to that set, right? And then you just define what function it is, mapping these things, and you're gonna get the bijection between the two sides, yeah? So that's how you prove it there. It's also um, commutative addition, essentially you have to just flip the zero and the one in that uh, disjoint union, requires a one-line proof. Multiplication, it satisfies the associativity law. And again here, well, we have triples, right? So essentially uh, when you define these Cartesian products in one case, uh, what you're gonna get in this case, I'm just taking, I'm gonna do a few steps in one, this is the cardinality of the set of pairs kappa k comma l comma m. This is the pair of pair for k in kappa, l in lambda, and m in mu. While the other one over here is going to be the cardinality of the pairs uh, kappa, l, m in mu. And then those two sets are, well, they are different sets as sets, but of course there's an easy bijection mapping uh, these guys essentially mapping this element to that element, just flipping, move, moving the, the pair from one side to the other. Of course, they are in a bijection, so these two are the same size. Uh, commutativity is also, uh, multiplication is also commutative. Essentially, you have to take the, the uh, Cartesian product and flip it, uh, and get that. Um, associativity, it's also Quite easy. If here is uh, lambda, here is mu. This is a disjoint union of lambda times mu, and here is kappa. Here is kappa times lambda. Here is kappa times mu, and everything together is kappa times lambda union square union kappa times uh, mu, but then of course that's the same as lambda union mu times cap. So you can see it one way or another and you get this guy is equal to that guy. Uh, exponentiation has um, some nice interesting properties and um, this uh, is interesting how these properties which I guess we proved by recursion before and they are these tricky properties of exponentiation are actually just natural properties that follow from these definitions a set of functions. Um, you have to be, be careful of how you define these things, right? So uh, let's do 
a couple of these. So for instance, we want to define here a function f that goes from the space of functions from lambda, the set of functions from lambda plus mu to the kappa, to the space of functions from lambda to the kappa, Cartesian product functions from mu to the kappa. Okay, so that means we want to transform a function of the first kind into a pair of functions of the other kind. And how are we going to do if you have a function? Uh, we, we're going to define this one. If you have a g that uh, belongs to this guy, we're going to map this. We're going to let this be the pair. We need to be a pair, right? Because we need one in each. And here we're going to do g restricted to lambda comma g restricted to mu and then this one belongs to here and this one belongs to here so see a function whose domain whose original domain was the union this disjoint union of lambda and plus let me just actually write this joint union there now splits into two functions, one with uh, domain lambda and one with domain mu. And to show that it's actually uh, a bijection, you need to show that it's an inverse, a given, uh, first, yes, an inverse essentially, that given two functions, one with domain lambda and one with domain mu, you can recover a function whose domain is the disjoint union of lambda times mu. So the inverse operation of this f. And that's how you get that these two sizes are the same. The uh, product rule for the exponentiation also works. So now again we will need to define a function that we're going to define a function from mu to the lambda to the kappa so we're going to do it in this direction to lambda times mu to the kappa and so what is this function going to be? So this function f applied to a g, now a g that belongs to here is going to be what? So now we have to define, is this uh, object should be a function also that belongs to kappa, it's a function that goes from mu times it's lambda times mu to kappa, right? So how we define a function we need to say what the function does on its values, okay? So what is this function going to do on its values. When we apply this function that we, uh, we get here to let's say L comma M we should get so here is L comma M and we are going to get something that belongs so FG applied to L comma M has to belong to K to kappa right so what is this going to be? Well, g, if you apply g to something in um, mu, what is that going to give us? Phi g applied to something in mu is going to give us a function from lambda to kappa, right? So g of m is a function. Uh, from uh, lambda to kappa. And that's not what we want. We want an object in in kappa. So what we're gonna do is apply this now to L, and now we get a function in uh, an, an element of of kappa. Okay. So this is a bit tricky. Uh, it's a bit abstract. So please uh, slow down this part. Take a look. Try to prove this uh, bijection that you can actually go back uh, from the right hand side and go from, you can do the other the inverse function of this and because it's a function that you apply in the input of this function is a function and you're operating a function so that's why it's a bit abstract and it requires actually to sit down with yourself and um, play it play down with it a little bit and also um, look at it on the book all right See you guys next week.